Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Unrestricted Podcast. I'm Maddie Stunts, and I'm also joined here with Drew Camden, aka Ladrib. How's it going, guys? And Chad Capper. <laughs> How's it going, Chad? Hey, I'm Chad Capper. Hey, Hi. welcome hey. to me. <laughs> yeah. And you're rocking a beard right now. <laughs> yes, I am. How He's long has this been going while. for? I haven't seen Maddie in like eight years. Well, two months. Settle down. It hasn't been that long of a. Well, yes. Okay, so let's address the elephant in the room here. We haven't put out a podcast in the last little while. Kind of to do with, I guess I would say it's my fault. Um, no, I would I would completely say it's your fault. Yeah, but at the same time, I've been doing <laughs> adult stuff, which uh, took a lot out of me. Just bought a house. You got with, married. With, just got, yeah, got married. Got, just bought a house with my wifey. And uh, and in Vancouver. Wait, did you really get married? No, we, I didn't get married. Oh. I was I was actually <laughs> you, you, trolling my girlfriend. But um, she's that's like, the worst possible troll. Well, she's like this. She, this, this is li- literally what she said. She's like, so uh, we have the mortgage broker. We got to go through these documents and we got some paperwork from the lawyers. And can you look at these other uh, two houses? And uh, also, do you think you could change your status on Facebook? And she like just stuck it in there. And I'm like, oh, God, really? Do I have to? And she's like, well, yeah, I want to show people off and all that stuff. So I was like, OK, cool. So when I went in there, you know, Maddie stunts, uh, uh, very Maddie stunts, and just figured that I'd said, okay, well, I need me to change my status. We're married. There we go. <laughs> I, I wasted a congratulations on you. I got like 250 congratulations at the end of it. I was kind of like, like upset at myself that all these people think I'm married now, but it, we're in – we're in a marriage like relationship so that's well, do you what think it... it'll stay do you think it'll stick yeah of course <laughs> oh what the proposer? marriage proposed no yeah. proposer right now no like well on the, the podcast one? yeah absolutely. no proposer right I, now I, that I'm could gonna, be the I'm thing gonna, i'll tell you a little bit about what's what's happened okay so <laughs> literally in the since two years ago i was on the verge of suicide and since then um jenny's been in my life for a little while now and since then i went from not thinking I would have a future to us trying to build a family together and maybe even having kids. And so Jenny is absolutely like a savior in my life. So, um, it's, it's very good. She's, she's taught me how to, uh, visualize the future more than anyone else has. And she's a a really smart girl. She's, uh, she's from Taiwan, but she speaks like Taiwanese, Cantonese, Mandarin. She's very smart. Works for a big developer in Vancouver, and uh, and yeah. So it's it's great, guys. It's made me more motivated, and and uh, obviously, it's been such a long time since we've done this, but it's because we've been doing like life, real life shit. But on top of that, she wants me to, you know, pursue more stuff in FPVing and and all that other stuff. So. It's, Whoa, that was my next question. What does she think of your hobby? She loves it. She's learning how to fly. Well, we've been watching Game of Thrones lately, so she hasn't really been on the sim as much, but uh, she's been learning. I want her to learn how to fly so she can come out, and um, and she she really likes what I do. She supports me in everything that uh, I would want to do. So, Great girl. That's my that's personal really life great. in a nutshell lately, though. That's been happening. Yeah. Well, that's What's... a really good story. Now I feel like I can't make fun of you or Maddie for not doing a podcast, <laughs> having all sorts of life successes. Oh, you can still do that. Okay, yeah, come on, unrestricted, baby. Yeah. I uh, well, so we just lost Chad there, but um, yeah, the long and short of it is, it's uh, it went. I went from nothing to buying a, a house with a the woman I love. So it's uh, oh, that's really awesome. Yeah. Okay, I'm back. There you go. Sorry, guys. So, what's been happening with you guys? What tell the audience what's been happening in the Drew world? What's going on? My world in the uh, Drew world. That's you. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm running the company now, so that's that's been a big thing. Just skim um, over that. So and just talk about it. Just skimming stuff. over that. What do you mean um, skip? Well, skimming over? I thought you were always running the company. <laughs> well, <laughs> I wouldn't say that's inaccurate. <laughs> Zing! All right, I'll see you later. <laughs> well, you know, we know what I mean. You were the biggest, uh, I think you were not the biggest, but you had a very big part in organizing everything. So what? How, what's changed 
since from what I thought your roles and responsibilities were? Well, just uh, they're been official formally now. appointed as uh, president of the company. So um, I've been kind of growing into it really over the past two, three months, just kind of running more of the meetings, um, getting more directly involved with uh, behind the scenes financials and the uh, retail operations and just kind of like every everything. Nice. Um, Nice. And so at the, I think September, September first, right? First, yes. first weekend of September. Yep. That's when the you know official press releases kind of went out to to announce me as president. So and, um, one month has almost gone by that you haven't driven into the ground. Yeah, the stock I'm hasn't just dropped. So I'm what? Still what trying. was Chad before that? Then Chad, I guess you were the president or CEO or how? Well, did it president work? and CEO, I guess owner. So, and then how, um, how does this affect your status then, or I should say title? So I, I a lot of people might not be, well, and everybody kind of shares like, or doesn't share the exact same terminology for what they mean. But I look at it as a CEO as um, kind of the, the visionary as far as working at more partnership levels, uh, you know, the, the, the bigger financial decisions. Uh, where president is like daily activity. Um, and president is still very involved in the vision of the company, um, but uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, that's that's how I see it. Um, you know, Drew's running everything. I mean, he he more or less consults with me, but mm-hmm. he doesn't have to ask my permission. Um, and yeah, and you know, something I do want to put out there. You know, anybody that's uh, you know, working their way up through a company or, you know, was running a company or wants to run a company. Um, you know, I, Drew had always, I guess, looked at me as kind of a mentor. And as I would give him advice, he would like immediately implement it. Um, and that was super impressive because a lot of times, um, people ask advice of people that, you know, they want to learn from, but then, ultimately what they want to do is just validate their decisions um you know people want to make the decisions they want to make and they want somebody they look up to to validate that they're making the right decisions where Mm -hmm. um i i think and and drew probably did this in his prior career job as well uh because he moved up the ranks pretty quickly but I guess what I want to say is you have to seize the opportunity. Like nobody's going to hand you leadership. Like mm-hmm. you have to take it. And, and I've had, um, you know, conversations with Drew about that, you know, and, uh, and he did, he totally even kind of surprised me at times. Like he would, instead of, uh, you know, something going well and, you know, typically people will try to claim their part in it when it, when something does well, Drew would actually almost go the other way when something was suffering, he would ask for the responsibility of fixing it and sometimes not even ask, just do it. And most of the time he would just do it. So that's why he's in the role that he's in. It's, you know, he, he, he took, (laughs) he took the role. Um, but I'm also, um, I, I'm a good starter. You know, I, I start things and get them established once they're, established i'm really bad at managing them i'm not a good manager so drew is a an excellent manager well when you guys came up here i i realized that drew's a aries like myself and i remember even remember having the conversation with him that he's a he we're good management people and i see mm-hmm. that i i can see that in him and and everything that i've ever dealt with him in or, or just seen him dealt with a situation so yeah that's awesome i'm uh I'm happy. That's that's a great uh, a great um, added diversity to I guess the company that was already still there. But it's it's good to see the um, what what word am I looking for here? Credit? No. Um, showing the person that they are good. What is that word? God damn it! <laughs> Recognition. No. What are we trying to say? Thank you. I, yeah, I appreciate yeah, thank both, you. both of thank y'all's you, Drew. Uh, very thank you. kind words. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, awesome. thank you. Um, uh, I'm excited about it, and I, I think kind of what you're saying about, um, you know, one of the pilots uh, being like formerly the leader. That's that's what I think is kind of the best part of it. Is that you know I'm I'm still still a pilot, always will be a pilot, 
and I want that um, that perspective kind of uh, in in place for the company at a at a leadership level, so that we can continue. I don't want to say that Chad does, hasn't always put pilots first; he always has. Um, you know, the the people that works for the company and and being kind of the pro pilots or the sponsored pilots or whatever. Um, but I'm I'm hopeful that my perspective, having been on that side, still being on that side, um, can you know continue yeah, that pe- in, a, in a good way. Pe- people always respect when people have walked in their shoes and even though I fly, I don't, I don't fly like the rotor riot pilots, not even close. So, um, so, and, and, and it wouldn't matter if I practiced forever. I'm just, I'm never going to get to that level. Um, and you know, Drew has, <laughs> he has really just even shot past what I think a lot of people thought he was capable of um, in in that area. So I think he has earned a lot of respect um, in multiple areas, and uh, so I think that's that's good for the company as well. Mm-hmm. Um, plus, a, a big part of my time uh, now is going to the FPD yeah, this is what Coalition. I'm the, the next thing, he's so already starting it? the next thing. <laughs> what is it? Always. So the FPV Freedom Coalition is an organization. Actually, it's going to be a an, it's going to be a corporation that we're putting together, a nonprofit corporation, um, and various reasons as to why it was an hour and a half um, lawyer conversation yesterday. But uh, but the purpose of it is to solely focus on the freedoms of the FPV pilots, um, where the AMA encompasses radio control aircraft the FPV Freedom Coalition will be very specific to FPV pilots. Um, and initially, um, we want to be able to create a community-based organization that um, will be able to provide specific guidelines for FPV, not not just guidelines or rules based on adapting them from fixed wing or line of sight or other things, but to think of it primarily first and what are the best guidelines to operate by um, serving the needs and, and dare I say, desires of the FPV pilot. That's, so that the context is that it, in comparison to the AMA, that's the real only in America uh, existing CBO community-based, wait, community-based yep. organization? Yep. Yeah, that's CBO, right. community-based organization is the AMA, and like you're saying, it's, it's all RC flying things so this is meant to be more focused on fpv because it is a very different uh community and a different use case for radio control yeah and the ama has i mean they're they're working hard for a lot of things and and there's nothing wrong with that and i think some people have looked at this as competition but i i've I've never seen it as competition i think it's just a focused effort uh for an area and if anything it, it gives both organizations more power that's awesome. So if it's nonprofit and you have to put so much time to it, do you get any type of like compensation for your time? No, no, it would so be. So this is totally no, it's for something f- for you to help the community with and, and make sure that we don't get screwed over by the rule makers. Well, yeah, but it, I mean, it's not completely altruistic. I own multiple companies in the space. So, <laughs> you know, that's right. That's right, right. It, it, so when the space grows, you know, our companies grow. But yeah, I mean, but my heart has always been to help people have fun. I mean, if you look mm-hmm. at my history, you know, everything from my production company to flight test to Rotor Riot, it's to help create jobs for people to have a great time in their career. Um, because I have every job I've had, I've it's been something within my interest, and not every job. Early on, I had some jobs that I couldn't stand, but at some point, I got to have a career doing what I absolutely loved. And around me have been so many people that hate what they do. And it just, it, it there's quite frankly, there's, there's, there's a big question mark of, wait, why do I get to enjoy what I do and other people don't? So I try to make those opportunities for other people, you know, the way that I have them. Mm-hmm. That's awesome, man. I'm looking forward to it. Um, Gave me my dream job. That's what I always say. Yeah. <laughs> I got to, to, to. Be be a you know semi movie star on YouTube. Got to design drone parts. Got to fly things. Got to do podcasts. Travel around the world. Yeah, and now I'm 
in running that organization, I want to continue to secure those same opportunities for other pilots. You know, that's something I'm really enthusiastic about with the future of Rotor Ride is, is um, you know, everyone that's currently working for Rotor Ride, making sure that their job is secure mm-hmm, <laughs> and right. that we can continue to bring on more people and, you know, eventually even start finding ways for people passionate about FPV or drones to find work, even if it's not directly for us, you know, to make those connections. Yeah. And you know what? I want to make sure I call attention to the other guys as well. I mean, you know, everybody from, you know, Kevin to Tommy to Bardwell to Bot Grinder, you know, he's doing so much work with Quad Can or I'm sorry, Quad Box. Uh, Kevin mm-hmm. is doing a absolutely phenomenal job of building Quad Camp out online. Um, and it's very innovative the way he's going about it. And I really get excited about that because I feel like, you know, we 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 get a chance to um, really, really innovate. You know, with our products, we refine, um, you know, what's out there. We, we take something that's out there and ref- we refine it. Um, and, you know, I would say Tommy's pushing forward on innovation with, you know, the sticky pad and, you know, the, the, well, the um a grip, but um, the, the Acro Brat, the Remix. Um, and then Kevin is really pushing forward in the educational space. I mean, to awesome. essentially have world class education available at 20 bucks a month. I mean, it's it's awesome and it's not just education it's fun you know you get to be part of that community and get access to you know pro expert help and i just get so excited about that because i can see his vision for it and i love that he can focus on building that he doesn't have to worry about you know flying a you know a a commercial airline um or a, a commercial airplane and do this on the side he can focus his energy on building this out and um, mm-hmm. and obviously you know Joshua has been you know doing this stuff uh, you know for a while now so I just get really excited about the team and what everybody's doing and I think Drew has done a great job of keep making them more effective by keeping people more focused than I can so and Maddie Sorry comes up and Maddie rabbit. comes out with a podcast every two months so you know Maddie's <laughs> killing it in the podcast world you know <laughs> we can do more. Actually, you this is this is your baby, and you made it something that I enjoy doing. I think a lot of people enjoy watching and listening to it, and it's uh, no, I just I just love that. I love if if there's anything that I can do or we can do to you know help people do stuff they love. I think it's great. Yeah, I I mean, when was the last time I put out that last edit? Was in like July or something like that. And I flight at it. You owe us one. You owe us. Yeah. You, not us, the company. The, the community needs to see a new Maddie Sons flight video. It's been too long. So, well, and I, I mean, know you've now, got something now. So, okay, so, but before that edit, I didn't put an edit out in on YouTube for like almost six months. So this is usually what my like common thing is lately since I. So, I mean, the first year it was like I was flying and editing all the time, but then like after that it was kind of like Maddie Sons would come out of the cave and then go back into the cave this this little uh, um sabbatical has only been about two months but before i had it uh july 27th i had a trick list that i wanted to start working on filming and there was new tricks on top of the other new tricks that were uh released in the last edit um i've told drew about one of them and he thinks that I should release it right now because just it'll break the that internet. Trick, man. But post I, this trick. I, I just I can't I can't do it, buddy. I went out yesterday to try to I'm get a leak good. It, I swear to God. Wait, <laughs> why can't you release it? Well, I mean, I, I guess I could tell people. I, I'm sure that I'll post something before this one comes. This podcast comes out. But I learned how to grind rails like properly, like proper grind. So. Um, well, I, I don't want people grind rails, but ha- no, it's not like a. It's not a bonk. It's like I lock in and I do like rainbow rails and like grind them. No, like you would. Yeah. No, Chad, it's freaking. Yeah. It's stupid. It's yeah. stupid. <laughs> You're like yeah, it's not. It's not it, yeah. a rail bonk. It's a proper grind. Like it. It, I, it takes a lot too. Like I'm not going to say that it's a trick that you can do every time. Even when I started, I practiced them 
getting them like locked in for like three days and then even after like the two week mark it wasn't it was still five out of ten that you'd hit so it's very hard because you have to tune the quad properly you have to make sure that you're lined up and and to hit a rail that's only like you know a couple inches big and to make sure that you're at the exact proper speed and and elevation and just feathering it on to stay on is you have to be really like precise so do, it is a fun trick attachment on the drone like something like some sort of curve i don't know drew i don't know I don't know. I don't know what you're well, talking about. No, no, no. Pretend I like it's, this I is this podcast. No. Maybe no. that a podcast will come out after you've released it. No, I got it. So oh, my on. whole thing with it is I don't want to release it until I have like a murder edit of just rail jibbing. So um, do it. Yes. I started to try to do it yesterday, but the rail that I usually practice at was completely full of people because this I started doing this in the summertime in the school that I was at. Um, schools in and they have soccer practice and all that boring stuff. So um, I, I'm probably going to... You have to have some sort of a tablet because you use a bottom mount battery. So, I, so I'm going to have... change your frame. I'm going to have to <laughs> wait until the weekend. And then on the weekend, I'll try to go... I'm going to go out. I'm already told Jenny. I'm like, Jenny, uh, we got to wait to get a dining room table delivered and then we are going out flying. So... Hopefully after a Saturday, I'll have something released on Instagram. I'm not going to tell anyone how I do it until I actually release the full edit, though. Drew just wants me wants me to release a clip. I'll release the clip, and then once I've released the full edit, I'll tell everyone the secret. But I'm sure everyone. Well, so that can... is something I do appreciate about you. Is so you do play because I know you've done this trick back in July, and you're sitting on it. Um, so I know you kind of play things close to your chest, but something I really appreciate is once it's out there, so you save it so that you can put it out there, but once it's out there, you're more than happy to explain to Absolutely. people how you do it. Well, but there's a lot of pilots, I don't know, it, and it's hard to prove, <laughs> but I do feel that there are certain pilots that they try to be a little bit more secret about their sauce, you know, or they'll they'll downplay what it is, you know. And it, it, it's not, it, it's Name different. One. It's just not. No, no, I don't no want names. <laughs> no names. No names. No names. Maddie stunts. Right. Maddie stunts. No names. Um, <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. I, okay. I, I'll be more than happy. What I think what we should do is um, for the future of Rotor Riot, I absolutely when we move into the new house, we're we have like a, a quadrillion bedrooms in this place. So come on down to Vancouver. Uh, I already talked to Drew about this, Chad. But what we should do is fly into Seattle. I'll come pick you up in Seattle. And then come up to the house, the the Maddie the Maddie range, and then uh, we should build we should shoot a how to edit on the trick. And, Wait, why uh, why awesome. Seattle? Well, because then it's because it's we're a, not filming in Canada, so we're gonna film everything in Seattle. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. And even that, it's like your flights are probably gonna be cheaper if you land in Seattle and I come grab you, right? Then you don't have to get, you, you don't have to rent a car, you don't have to pay for a hotel, all that stuff. It could be a cheap little uh, trip for you guys, right? Nice. We can get some long ranging done and do some other stuff, you know. Yeah. But yeah, um, say when you give me I the like dates. That. Well, I, I think st- start of November. Start of November. Okay. Yeah. I, I was even have, a little bit sooner because we're I have, well, so we is, when we film content we we like we'll get like a bunch and so we'll have like some scheduled out. We're you know we've got rampage coming up and then after rampage probably mid or late October we're gonna need to get a crew together again to film well, the next batch of episodes. If you guys feel like coming over uh, October twenty second ish, that you're, might work. You're more you're more than welcome. The only thing is I'll be doing some rhinos around the house. Uh, upstairs okay. but the place will be so big we can literally like move mattresses downstairs and you know there's like three living rooms fucking five bedrooms and shit so it's it's big so we'll have space. Oh, we slum it we i just had everyone over to my house for a for a film week and like so they're in my basement small basement just air mattresses all next to each other yeah i know we have yeah. like king size <laughs> beds for like everyone pretty much nice so, so maddie yeah. do you know what i'm doing that weekend specifically no I'm going to a crypto conference. Oh, no way. <laughs> yes. So it's in L.A. Maybe you should come down. 
Well, no, 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 Chad, Chad, you go to the crypto. Don't distract him. We're I'm getting a crew together, and we're going to go film stuff at with with Maddie stunts. You go to crypto conference, whatever. No, 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 don't distract him. (laughs) Okay, so Drew, I mean, I'm going to tell you right now. Okay, I'm not going to confirm or deny it, but if if you're a rollerblader, or if you're a skateboarder, or if you're a BMXer. A BMX, if you take out just a regular bike and you try to grind with that bike, it wasn't possible until they modded it to be able to grind it, right? Yeah, they put the pegs. Yeah. Okay. So same, same, same for grinding a drone. So are they pegs? Like they're coming off the arm ends? What is it? No. Nope. Or is it on the nose? It's not. It's not a peg. It's just it, it's a design. There. We like I feel through, like it'd be something on the nose, right? We went like through some sort of fork. Well, I know you're. You're just trying to suck. You're just trying to suck the information out of me. I'm not. I'm not going. <laughs> That's it. That's all I have. You're posting it this Saturday. It's Thursday. You're posting so, it in two so days, right? I'll tell you this. I went through a couple different designs, and there's actually a design that works better than the other. So, uh-huh. um, are you I'm working sure, with Rebel on that? I'm sure. No, no, no. I, I did. I did all this stuff myself. Just did it in my. What are you making out of? Like, are you just are you just hammering metal into place? Is this 3D printed? What is it? You'll have Sugru? to see when you come up. You'll see when you come. What up. is it, Matt? No, <laughs> I can't do it. Uh, what else? So, th- there's a new Hero Seven, and I see you've you've had some hands-on experience with it. Yeah. What's uh? Yeah, GoPro reached out to us and and gave it to us a week before it came out, and said we could you know film an episode and not release it until the embargo is over. Um, but that was pretty cool of of them to really recognize, um, the FPV use case, and you know we got on a conference call, and um, I think two two of the guys from gopro on the call were fpv pilots themselves what? you know so like the, yeah it's pretty cool that's awesome well yeah. okay so now it, give me give me the details here is this thing is this thing good is it worth the upgrade from the last one uh well it depends on what you want to use it for so i mean like it what does, are the biggest the biggest that, advantages of it so I'd say three things. One is better spec, so it'll do 4K super view, 60 frames a second. You know, woohoo! Um, then it's so that's that's bullet point one, and then the next two bullet points are new features. So one feature is called, uh, oh shoot, is it time warp? I think it's called time warp. So it's kind of like it, it makes hyperlapses for you. So you can just walk, you can just walk with the camera in your hand, and it will. I don't think it's really taking pictures. It's taking video, but it's doing real time stabilization. Um, so you can, you know what, like a hyperlapse is, right? Yeah. Where you might see someone I've like done walk hy- around a city square and the people are like, right. you know, running all in. The clouds are moving, but it's like a moving time lapse. So now you can do that handheld. So it's now incredible. I, I've done hyperlapses and I've learned how to do them with my DSLR and with the Inspire. And I know, um, I know what you're talking about. You have to, when I do it, it's a timed interval for my camera my picture and, and you have then to frame up the subject every and time. then an actual measured out um traveling distance that you have to go so to make it look really 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 pretty that's what you have to do how easy is it to do it on that new gopro just walk with it i mean the this more steady you can hold it the better it's going to be so i'm exporting a vlog tonight it's going to go live either tonight or tomorrow morning. Um, so well, well before this podcast gets posted, but there's a little transition scene. So I get to the bando and I'm like, Oh, we're at this spot. And then I do a hyperlapse where I walk like around it and then into it. And seriously, that was just in my hand. I just kind of walked, walked my little path. And then the hyperlapse that it spit out, it was a little shaky. I could have been more steady with my hand, but then I just put a warp stabilizer in premiere and it's like it's looking really good. So it's it'll take a little bit of practice, but dude, it's so much easier than doing something with your DSLR because you just walk it. You know it. You know what the secret is to that, Drew? Um, mm-hmm. The secret to shaky uh, having better um, stable video with your GoPro is all these guys. What they do is they put it in their mouth, and when you put it in your mouth, it keeps it very rock solid. So you just hold it huh. in your mouth and you just look where you want to go. And it even if you're trying to film someone or film something, if you have it in your mouth, it just for some reason your head doesn't shake as much as the stabilization is in your muscles. Because if you think of it it's this like a way, chicken, right? you have all these different stabilizing muscles that are trying to, to hold you steady. But your head is – when you're walking, it's not like your head is jittery. Your vision is jittery. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You're like a uh, pigeon. 
Okay, um, so the, okay, so okay, there's so, the so, hyperlapse. And then so the, the third 4K, the 60. third bullet point is a second feature that's called hyper smooth. So this is they're calling it the the death to gimbals. Um, they're calling it magic. It is um, it's really good. So it's it's really powerful in camera stabilization, all digital. Um, you know the five the five stabilization was pretty bad. I mean you could it might help handheld shots a little bit. But for example, if you put the Hero Five on a quad and use stabilization, it would ruin your footage. You'd get really weird movements, bad vibrations, just awful. Um, six stabilization, you could use it on a quad. I've seen it used on a quad. Sometimes it worked okay. I don't know. The seven, it works pretty pretty dang well on a quad. I've still pushed it a couple times where there's been a couple. I won't fly with it on if I'm doing acro. Uh, but if I was chasing a subject. Um, and a great example of this is Johnny. His, you know, his video that he put out the day the the seven was announced was him chasing some cars. If I was doing something like that, chasing cars or a subject or doing something cinematic like Gab just flying up and then back down a cliff line, I would totally use it. No, no reason not to. It's it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Now I have the six, and it would, it took me a long time to get this, but I started. I I use this only for like it's never been crashed or anything like that it's basically for long-ranging mid-ranging stuff um yeah um never would put it in like concrete or whatever but it's I just do. It, i fly it on the because i don't have any sessions left yeah i so, destroy my sessions. oh really you don't have sessions left <laughs> no i killed them all and so now i just fly all sixes or, or five and when i say five i don't mean session five like i have the full size five mm-hmm. so this thing when i put it into stabilization mode and then do like a fly down a shoot or like film some water it mm-hmm. is crazy stable and then you can put stabilization on it through warp stabilizer and premiere and you can still Seven, get a very better. stable so it's even better hey even definitely. better than that it's definitely better now can you yeah. make it probably could you make it good with the software or is make it something the six where good? yeah or yeah can you i make... dude i don't know what the hardware change i don't know about the guts but you know i do know that the the hero, the cheap one, the the two hundred dollar one that couldn't even do more than ten eighty p. People figured out you could flash the firmware and turn it turn it to a full blown blown five. So I don't know. You might be able to get some more performance out of the six, but I do believe there are hardware changes. I, I know it's got some better Wi Fi technology built in. That's that's hardware dependent. But um, what I'm saying is, could you do a hero six film the exact same uh, subject that you're filming? And could you get the six looking as good as the seven with Adobe Premiere? Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't. I mean, the point is, the six is discontinued anyway. Right. And well, the, the seven always... is not going to be any more expensive. So, like, if you already have a six, should you run out and get a seven? Probably not, unless yeah. you know you always want the cutting edge stuff. But you know, if you're in the market for a new GoPro, yeah, buy the seven. Don't don't go find a discontinued six. You know, get the mm-hmm. seven. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. What about rapid fire? You guys have these rapid fires yet? I've got a rapid fire, so that's that's a, the new hot receiver module for uh, for Fat Sharks. Is it better I than a Furious? It's so f- it's so good. It's Can, so good. Okay, I didn't so, want to believe it. So did you get these from Anthony? Because I've been hounding this guy for like almost a year now. Um, I know Anthony. I don't want to call out it. He he promised them to all of us, and then it was a really popular product. They had a couple launch problems. I don't they had power outages during production i mean you know seriously so should i just um, buy one or what is that what you guys did or uh, uh i don't know, talk to anthony again <laughs> maybe maybe you can get one he i did eventually get one but it came through tommy so tommy right. got one from anthony and then f- flew it to detroit for me like because he came here so right i got it that way but um you know if you you might just want to buy it, or if you, you know, if you, if you still got access to the sponsored pilots discounts, maybe you can get a discount on that. But did, like, dude, it's it's good. It's did good. you did you use the Furious before? So, I had a Furious. I hated the Furious. I had really bad luck in, with it. In which I way? I had a bad one. I had a bad one because I tried Jeff's Furious. I tried Zoe's Furious, and theirs were pretty much fine. My Furious got horrible interference from other pilots, like totally unflyable. So I had a bad Furious. I reached out to Furious to see if they could help me out. and they, Whatever, I didn't really get too good of a response, so I'll just leave it at that. Um, LaForge sent me a free setup when they heard I was having trouble, which I really appreciated. And I loved the LaForge setup, especially with the V4, because it gave you 
on-screen display capability in the goggles so I could control everything in the goggles without ever having to look at the outside screen. Right. I loved that. And for that reason, I didn't want to switch to Rapid Fire because Rapid Fire doesn't have that yet. It might, but it currently doesn't. But anyways, I got my hands on this Rapid Fire, and I'm like, ah, it's so good. Hmm. It's so good. So I should, I should definitely uh, – because I got my ground station stolen out of my car, and I feel – like it's one of those things where like I never leave my gear in the car, especially overnight. And I'm always like, whenever someone loses their shit in their car, I'm just like, good, you know, like fuck, why are you keeping it in your car? You know, serves Obviously, them right. Yeah, serves them right. And mm-hmm. it totally fucking backfired on me. And then so the guy, like my car gets, I'm driving a Mercedes. It, it people think there's change in it. There's never fucking anything in it, right? And the guy went ramp going through my car and i'm like oh this idiot just like messed up my, my insurance papers and everything closed it up didn't think anything of it and totally forgot that my ground station was in the back and uh ground station got stolen i'm still Sucks, so man. i'm still so upset like i i because the thing is it was a quad diversity with like laforge type technology so it 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 just had so- like a really good software to it, and the thing that I like about it, I don't even care about the setup time. I'll do the setup time. The thing I like about it is I can point where I need it. So like with with two, if I have two antennas, one's usually cloverleaf and one's like the oh shit antenna where like it gets hectic and like let's try to point that way, right? With that thing, it's like I could give four directional antennas and I could cover like 180 degrees of space plus whatever was behind me uh with really good directional antenna capabilities and then i went online even and i'm like i'm just gonna i'm just gonna take it you know i've never really spent money on a ground station before i'm just gonna try to find something that's quad diversity and there's nothing out there like do you guys know of anything that's quad diversity that i can just buy as a package no i've never used quad diverse i've never had a need for quad diversity well, immersion's got some stuff i don't, I don't think so i don't well, think yeah, so. Dude, just get a rapid fire it, just get a rapid fire but the rapid fire doesn't have four ports that's the thing oh my I'm talking God. about so when, when yeah. the places you guys know the places i fly it they're they're pretty like busy places it's not it's not like a band or anything like that but if you're in the area you can fly everywhere so if it's a really dense forest, you know, it, it really takes away um, the quality of flying because I'm just fighting through interference, right? Um, try, try the rapid fire. Okay. I think you're going to like it. It's The, the locking is insane. It's okay. when it locks. When it locks. So I was on race band one. There was someone on race band two powered on like at my feet, like four feet away. And when that signal locked in, I was flying behind concrete walls and stuff. It was like, it's fine. It's so crazy. Do you guys have it in the Rotorite store? We do. Yeah. Store.rotorite.com. Okay, so let's let's get people pointed to that uh, that Rotorite store, and we'll make sure that uh, we can get some sold. But I think I'll go on and order one through the store because I think I have a sponsored uh, pilot Ye- access code or something like that. So I'll order one tonight. And then I'll sell my my Furious to uh, to Aaron. Or no, wait a minute. He just fucking bought a Furious. God damn it. God damn it, that. It doesn't Tony. hurt to have a backup. It doesn't hurt to have a backup. Uh, I really like the Spectrum products, and I'm one of the few. Uh, I feel like pilot. Well, I'm the only rotor ride pilot that uses Spectrum. You know, so it's it's uh, not anymore. Are you still using a Spectrum controller? Yeah, I still am. Radio? I still use radios and receivers. Hmm. Mm. So if you had to switch, Drew, what would you switch to? I don't know. I hate them all. I don't even like – I mean, I hate every radio. I don't even like Spectrum. I just hate it the least. There's no – I'm like <laughs> – user interface is such a hard thing to do. You know? Yeah. Like I don't is. actually like Rapid Fire. I hate Rapid Fire. But I hate it so much less than I hate all the other options. <laughs> FPV. Mm. You're, you're a nihilist. <laughs> or no, what is it? No, okay. I mean FPV what, is what are they just called? such a – it's like – the user interface of FPV gear just ha- hasn't been ref- – like, I have this in my pocket. This is incredible. This is an amazing work of human interface. You know, like, like everything is just so seamless. So, like, I'm spoiled by hey, this. which one I is I want that? everything to work as well which as my one? phone. And it's just not going to. You know, we have stupid joysticks and analog displays. It's awful, you know, but but it's all, all, all awful. 
Which phone is that? It's the iPhone XS. The new one. I did a vlog about it and got hate the on it. One? Which I'm also bitter about. The the newest newest yeah. one? Is it worth it? Well, what do you have? Oh, I have uh, I, I It's not even here. It's like a 6. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's worth it. Wait, is it 10S so or the XS? Thing is, I, I don't think the X stands for 10, does it? Yeah, it does. Are you it's sure? It's 10S. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the big that's the big version that came out. No, right? no, no, no. The there's the, there's the 10s and then there's the 10s Max. So I have the small. So it's still it's still a small phone, but it's got it's got yeah. like edge to edge. Like the screen is huge. So okay. So what about the plus? Was the plus? And there's an R as oh, well. Oh, right? that's garbage. That's like a seven eight seven twenty p screen. That's bad. Okay. So so I was waiting for the 10x. And then when the Tang X came out, I heard very quickly that they were going to discontinue it. And then all of a sudden, September comes around, and they're releasing these phones, and I'm waiting for it. My screen's broken. I'm waiting to get my new phone. And they're like, oh, it's a 10X again. A 10S. And then I was like, well, what the f- – wow. Yeah, 10XS. XS. Uh, that's how they always do it. I have a 6S yeah. plus. But I, I'm wondering, do you have you felt the big one yet? Yeah, it's big. I just don't like the, the big, big one. one. Co- but yeah, it's big. I okay. mean, I had an eight. I had an eight S plus before, and I liked it. It was just too big, right. but I wanted the big screen. So now I have big screen, small yeah. phone. It's nice. Okay, I'll go. I'll go take a look at it. I I just been so busy with this house uh, stuff, you know, so paying lawyers. Why is there and, no nine and and all this stuff? Because seven, eight, nine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That joke was excessive. <laughs> I don't even get it. We, this is it. That's the perfect ending. <laughs> no, no, no. We can't. We can't. We can't. Just uh, we are. We're only at the 53 minute mark too. So uh, the last thing here is is uh, it's coming up very quickly, and, and this thing probably won't even air before it comes out. But. Uh, Rotorite oh, yeah. Rampage. Seven, eight, nine. Um, <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rotorite Rampage. I don't get it. Like, Why? So what happened? Because oh there is one... no iPhone. Hold on, we have this is important. There is no iPhone nine. So no, this isn't this isn't important. I'm telling you, this is gonna everyone's gonna click away important. because I did a vlog about. It. I'm bitter about it. If you can't, no, nope, I'm, I'm talking I'm about this because bitter. I'm stuck on it now. So iPhone never made a nine. They went from eight to X, which is ten. Okay, that's why I'm Fine. like, iPhone is it also 10 never made a no two. Nine? Their whole numer- their whole nomenclature is, is totally screwed up. Okay, here. but iPhone, that is a valid iPhone question. 3G, iPhone, iPhone 3G, iPhone 3GS, iPhone four. Wait, it was. Uh, we're gonna count. So it was the iPhone, then the iPhone 3G, then the iPhone 3GS, then the iPhone 4, then the iPhone 4S, then the iPhone 5, then the iPhone 5S, then the iPhone 6, then the iPhone 6S, then iPhone 7, 7S. Now we've got 11 phones, iPhone 8, iPhone 8S, right? 13 phones, and then it went straight to 10, which is actually their 14th phone. <laughs> Makes no sense. Okay, but... <laughs> Okay, but why was the joke funny? Because I because said, why, eight, seven, what seven, happened eight, to nine? 9? And he said 7, 8. Nine. <laughs> seven, eight, nine. I like, like, seven, like, eight, 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 like seven, like eight, Like seven, eight, nine. Like the past tense of eat, I ate it. <laughs> oh, because seven, eight, nine. Oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't make that up. That's not my joke. Have you never heard that before? <laughs> no, I have not. <laughs> It, now, is that some type of, like, thing that they like to do? It, 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 did they actually That's a no. kid joke. No, I'm just, it's just a kid joke that was appropriate. Geez, and his timing was perfect. Okay, listen. Rampage. <laughs> rampage. Ramp- it, timing was perfect if I was actually, Eight. like, you know, Jesus. Rampage. Rotorite Rampage. rampage. Uh, yes. Uh, the first ever FPV freestyle festival. Wait, will this be out before Rampage, or... During or after? Probably not. I hope if Maddie so. helps edit it. It's a week away. It should. It should be. It should be out. I mean, Jesus. We've we've got our editor is going nonstop. Yeah. So. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll figure it out. I, I'm I'm super busy with life right now too, but I mean, it shouldn't take too long to just go through and cut and paste when people stop talking and. and so and yeah, but we interrupt each so. other a lot. It, it, 
so so what's going on with it so it was at first it was from what i heard last at least uh it was gonna be a t- competition but now it's just kind of like a expo no, it was never a competition it was never competition focused there was going oh, to be I thought there contests was. and competitions and there still are contests okay. and competition okay. well i don't know if it's competitions okay. or competition but the the big competition is actually being held by zoe so zoe is holding what she's and look, any pilot that you know wanted to get excited about this and like twist an aspect of it to his or her own, I was like all about it. So Zoe was like, "I want to do a freestyle contest." I'm like, "Great, get to work," and she totally ran with it. And you know, we we had to talk to our event organizers and carve out the time and get her this, but whatever. But she's she I haven't done a thing on it. She made the the sign up sheet for people that are there. She had uh, someone contracted to make the these cool light up 3d printed um trophies joe stand in them they're awesome oh they um, are she's cool. got a whole format she got multiple heats going across both days it's great so it's gonna there is gonna be a really cool contest that zoe's doing the the subtlety that i think is gonna make this so much so great is that the goal from the beginning was not that we have the most people or the biggest prize or any of that. It was that we have the most fun. And that was from day one. That was our goal was to say, let's get a group of people together. It doesn't have to be the biggest group. It doesn't have to be, you know, the most extravagant. We just want to make sure that we have the most fun because that's what FPV, that's what freestyle is. It's it's fun. It's not because whenever you make it that competition or, or, you know, something where that's the primary focus, the fun is the first thing that gets sacrificed. So we wanted to make mm. that the core. Oh, it's going to be fun. Like this is going to be quite a party, I think. And I mean, we actually, we Man, limited the I... number of tickets because if it, there's too many people, you don't even get to fly. We, you know, so, um, yeah, there's, it's, there's I, a lot going on. I though. wish I, I wish I could go. You guys. totally could. Can you just come? Could you just come and kidnap me and just be like we're and and just like pretend like you're not I on have, a plane? I have since I and then be was like, like surprise. ten years old. The first time I saw it on TV, I've wanted to use um, what's the stuff they put on the rag? Chloroform. Yeah. Chloroform. So Maddie, you've given me enough of an okay that you know chloroform doesn't work right away, right? Like you have to have it on the victim for like, and obviously it's a victim, but you have to have it on the victim Ooh. for like two minutes. Two minutes. It's not like it's not like it's not like this, and then all of a sudden you're out. It, it takes. I'm gonna need some help. So movies have kind of lied to you. Maddie's got some guns on him. Maddie's a big guy too. Yeah, I'm not that big. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that jacked, guys. Come on, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not, big at all. I'm not that I'm, I'm so strong. fat right now. It's I'm just not that strong. It's just like muscles from when I from like kid, just from being a kid. All right, arm wrestling and doing next sports. time. But um. No, I don't arm wrestle anymore. I saw my uncle ha- his uncle uh, my 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 uncle Garvin arm wrestled my uncle Danny and like on the on my dad's side of the family all the guys are pretty big, right? So um they were going at it. It was a heavyweight matchup and nope. pop my uncle Danny's uh nope. arm nope. broke and it was I saw horrible. a YouTube video where the guy's arm just broke right in the middle. Oh, just I hate you guys. Oh, yeah, Why that's are we talking about this? It, it's it's it, it, I'll never forget the oh. popping sound, and and like how hysterical my like grandma was like screaming afterwards, and uh, so I just never will arm wrestle again. It, the only time I'll arm wrestle maybe is if you're laying down and doing it like the like Native Americans oh, used yeah. to do, right? That was like one of their games. So they would lay down and do it, and that way you can't you can't when they do I it don't with think legs you can put too? yourself into a. I don't know, I don't know. That's just huh. craziness. Hey, I want to tell you guys something too. What I've been doing lately is I've actually been flying. Um, for anyone that's not watching the YouTube one, I've been flying 3D planes lately, and it's kind of like, you know, that South Park episode when Stan is playing Guitar Hero and he needs like the heroin, <laughs> and it's just like that. Where that is this going? Where he has to chase. Where he has to chase the dragon. That's. That's the chasing the dragon for me in like the FPV world. So it's just, they're really easy to maintain. Um, you can crash them a lot, and and uh, wait, are you like talking drones the, like the can, like, profile three D planes? The, oh, you, those you, are so yeah. Fun. Profile. I also have. I also have another. Which one do you one have? Two for three D flying, but I have a, cont- a katana. 
Oh, a tech, oh, one, tech one. one. And then I have a, uh, a tech Is one that Hobby, one. Hobby King? Is that where yeah, you bought him? No, I got him from Motion oh, okay. RC. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if Hobby King still sells Because I went to see, to I went to see the... You know what? I, I think that that industry is like going under because they don't make they don't make new planes anymore really I, I that I that I can see at least because what happened was I went to the air show in August uh, mid-august was the air show by the the next weekend I had a a, a adducted fan f18 that I wanted to fly because I wanted to like simulate being a fighter pilot and um, took it up crashed it first time went home hot glued it cl- crashed it again can't get this freaking thing to fly but anyways i was like oh, i'm having fun with this so maybe i'll get a uh, a profile plane too with, to fly like, you can't launch them with. too steep and that's uh, probably what what you're doing if you try to launch an edf too steep it'll you'll you'll biff it pretty quickly well no it's it wasn't that i just had i haven't been flying um i haven't been flying line mm-hmm. of sight for the longest time and uh and um anyways the these I've never flown a uh, air ducted fa- or a ducted fan mm-hmm. jet before, and they're just it it just flies a little weird. Anyways, I got it flying, and then what happened was I got it flying and I hit the switch for my flaps, and it just like my flaps were at like sixty degrees and the thing it just ballooned, went, like, up yeah, the air and just started and yeah it ballooned and and then I was panicking and I was trying to hit the switch for the flaps but I was hitting the switch for the <laughs> landing gear and, <laughs> so and then all bad. of a sudden I like pumped it into a tree. And like exploded it, and now it's like. Anyways, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy another one. I'll buy the F16 now that I have this thing flying properly. But I've been having fun with it. It's I know Schizo. He flies 3D. He's pretty good at oh, it. Yeah. But he's um, uh, he's really good. I'm at getting it, yeah. pretty. I, I'm getting pretty good at it. I can like do Harrier rolls now. But I can, can you hover grind do, with it? I like torque rolls. Uh, I did hit a. I did hit a soccer post, and it seemed like it grinded. <laughs> But I'm really excited to see the next it was video, like a, Matty. I want to see this grinding thing. It was like a bonk. Well, not even that. It Literally, like, the, the trick list that I have on my phone now for the next edit is is pretty spectacular. I really, I mean, I really like your There's approach like, to doing video. Like, I'm way more organic. I just want to, like, get in my mood and just go to a cool spot and do my things. And, like, I have tricks in the back of my mind. Like, there's always a few things I'm working on that, like, you know, I hold off to release. Like, no, nah, I haven't quite gotten that. But, like, you seem to really, like, got your bullet points. I'm going to knock each one off. You got your hit list and you want to, like, it's 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 a very different yeah. approach. I, I do do that with some edits, but I do like doing, uh, like, organic flights as well. So... I'll usually in my edits I'll usually put like some tricks where it's like hammer trick hammer trick hammer trick and then it'll be like a 30 second line of like hammer tricks and floatiness and and it won't just be like hammer trick hammer trick hammer trick and and that's it um but yeah uh if I don't do this I forget what I was going to do yeah I'll go out and I'll totally forget it I have to like consciously look at the trick and be like, oh yeah, okay, I need to do this. Where am I going to do it here? And I'm like, okay, I'm going to do that. And then it's going to probably land me in this little area. So then I'll go into this and for the next trick, you know yeah. what I mean? So, um, but the contact tricks, yeah, that, I'm that's excited. really cool. Like the grinding, cause of the clip I saw, you got onto it and got off it really smooth. And that was always, I never really liked wall bonks too much. Cause they're always like, <clears throat> like really jarring in the camera yes, shakes. Yes. I've been really into skids well, lately. So when I've got smooth ground, I'll try to re- as gently as possible, put the quad down skid. And then I really like doing, um, like a yaw spin. So I'll be skidding and I'll do a 360 yaw spin then keep the skid going and, and take off out. again. And I think I've, I'm yeah. pretty good at coming down and taking off smooth. Um, well, I can't can totally do the rail do thing at all. Stuff w- I can't do that rail thing at all. You can you can do a lot of stuff with the rail thing, but I'll tell you this much: it, if there's any little bit of like, usually a rail is 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 straight, and then it has a post like this, uh-huh. right? And usually it's a little bit rough where this post yeah. is. It's because it, they have to weld yeah, it on, I, right? Skateboarding. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So that little bit of like you don't really notice it when you're skateboarding bmxing or or um rollerblading or whatever and you're and you're grinding the rail but on the drone you can totally see the like bonk bonk 
bonk, bonk, bonk. So I found that I have to have like a really powerful ND filter to make it motion blur, and it kind of takes it out. Um, still, a down handrail is still very challenging. It's almost easier to do like a semi down rail or a flat rail that goes into a down rail. But I mean, there's like so many more tricks. Like I have to literally go and revisit every single place that I've ever flown to 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 see if there's like a, a rail there where I can like throw it into a line now. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I'm trying to think of like every place because you, you go to these places and I remember when I was a kid, I would look for those things. I would look for the rail. But now we don't look for those things because it's a totally, we're totally looking at like the flying awareness and like what we could do for the tricks. So now it's like every every spot that I go to, I'm like, oh, yeah, is there a rail here? And I'm looking for the rail now. Um, but uh, it's definitely going to open it up to – there's so many things. Like you can you can do a rail. You can, you can power loop, find a rail where there's an object, do the rail, power loop, get back onto the rail. You can get onto the rail. You can do – a hop up front flip and then you know get back up down on the rail all right um yeah, you're hyping it up so much now i just want to see it i don't want to hear you talk about it yeah i get i get excited but i am excited i'm glad that i talked to drew the other day because I'm, I'm i'm ready to go again so but that being said let's uh let's wrap this up is there anything else you guys want to no out, just or? if uh, if this comes out before rampage i hope to see a bunch of you guys there it's it's going to be a sweet party we've got a music stage with multiple uh bands lined up multiple djs tommy is uh, aka dj oh my god is headlining one night which is going to be awesome uh we've got a beer garden for after flying we've got uh multiple flying areas we've got an indoor led nano track that um newbie drone is going to be just going over the top with uh what else what else what else or some is there camp ground uh, majority of camping we had actually that was one of the challenges is the hotels filled up because of a um of a construction project in the area so all the hotels are filled with construction workers so what? yeah yeah i know no we thought we you know actually picked this location early enough in advance that we could book up the hotels but yeah uh so there's there's gonna be a lot of camping actually rvs are surprisingly cheap so you can get an rv and just you know still have like a proper bed and stuff so that's what that's that's what i'm gonna mm-hmm. be sleeping in i'll be i in would my totally trailer. need that hotel room <laughs> though i would i would totally need that hotel yeah. room i'm kind of a princess when it comes to like camping and yeah. stuff cool guys okay well listen hey it was uh it was great catching up uh hope to do this soon again we'll try to have a a guest a guest appearance or a guest uh, to come on for the next one. Um, this was kind of like, hey, are you guys available? Yeah, right before I wrote, uh, Rampage, we're available. So now give me like a week and we'll we'll get someone going. And you know, uh, as always, we to talk about the new quad camp online. But he's like I said, he's doing it. So if you guys doing anyone it right listening now. wants to That's learn so more cool about the quad camp online, just go to quadcamp.com. The basic premise is K-W-A-D. we've got. Yeah, kwadcamp.com. Um, we've got live Twitch streams that are, that's of course, free to the public, so anyone can tune in. Um, and then during those Twitch streams, uh, the, the host, whoever's on, like tonight it's Kevin, I did one the other night, whatever, um, can interact with the, you know, the paying campers one-on-one via a Discord server. So actually voice chat. So you know, if you're, if you're you know, a paying member, then you can come in there. We can troubleshoot whatever problems you have, uh, walk you through, answer questions, um, do do trick do... tutorials in the simulator. Um, yeah. My series has yeah, been on 3D it. printing, so I'm like modeling stuff live and uh, talking about you know how the thing I'm the thing I'm making in uh, CAD is gonna print out. Kevin has been doing a Part 107 course, so he's in there answering questions and quizzing people on Part 107 training. Like it's pretty cool and and. Like I said, you can totally take advantage of it uh, for free. You can still tune into the the Twitch sessions, and there's a lot of areas of the Discord server that are for free. So there's a lot that you just you know you don't have to pay, but if you do, there's bonuses you I, get. I would love to do a trick tutorial with you guys. Talk to Kevin. We'll get I you on the schedule. Stuff. Oh, if, yeah, you yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you can stream lift off, if you can stream lift off, we just have to figure out the logistics of um, of how how that would work. But I would love to do that. I, I love teaching people, um, especially the stuff that yeah. I do. I love uh, getting sure it out there. I would love that. 
letting someone enjoy those doing those tricks. Yeah, let's get you yeah, set up let's, for. Uh, let's talk about that more. Well, are you available next? I don't want to steamroll Kevin's. Kevin does all the schedule. I just got really excited. I'm like, I'll just schedule. No, we'll talk to Kevin. We'll get you on because that'd be great. I'll throw it. I'll throw it into the road ride chat when I get off the uh, when we get off the podcast here. But um, thanks everyone for joining in. We really appreciate the support, and uh, we'll see you soon.